I hereby call to order this regular meeting of the Board of Education for Wilmot Public Schools, District 39, this Monday, April 29th, 2024. The time is 7.01 p.m. Will the clerk please call the roll? Aaron Stone? Here. John Cesaretti? Here. Ann Hart? Here. Bonnie Kim? Here. Allison Pavlis? Here. Amy Paling? Lisa schneider Fabes. Here. You're very excited that Principal Kelly Jackson is here to recognize Highcrest's Honor Choir students who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we have a special way to line up. Um, so we have our Highcrest Honor Choir students, and I'm going to pass the mic to Mrs. Martin, and she is going to tell us a little bit about their experience and why they are our Honor Choir. Thank you. So these are seven of our eight students from Highcrest Middle School sixth graders who successfully auditioned into a National Honors Choir for the Organization of American Kodai Educators National Conference. So we were super fortunate that it was in Chicago this year. So we didn't have to travel very far. And because it was the 50th conference of this organization, we had a special treat at being able to sing at the Chicago Symphony Center. So that was really exciting. But we had eight students, which is about five, a little bit more than 5% of the entire choir. There were about 150 singers. And we learned a lot of very challenging music, right? Some, some of it college level music, uh, singing in four parts. And tonight we are going to sing one of our songs for you. That was one of the first songs, actually the first song that we started to rehearse together called Will There Really Be a Morning? Real quick, each one of the students wanted to share something about their experience. Could you introduce yourself and share something about your experience? I'm, Ev I'm Evie Simsek and what I learned from Mrs. Uh, our conductor was flutes, no trumpets, which is basically tall vowels <laughs> and quiet singing. I'm Adriana Davis, and one thing I learned from the honor choir was to support my tone and not to go too high. Hi, my name is Remy Giller, and I and I learned a few techniques from Miss K the honor choir conductor, like like playing the song like a motion picture. Hi, I'm Eleanor and um, Eleanor Ethington, and we like met a bunch of kids from like all over states and like there were people like in California and in Wisconsin and Oklahoma and a bunch of other states. Hi, I'm Kate Jesse, and I learned to sing like the like I'm in a cathedral, which means like sing light. Hi, I'm Grace Williams. I learned that um, there's always going to be someone who's better than you and there's always going to be someone who's like a little bit worse than you, um, but that it doesn't really matter and that we all got into honor choir because we did good enough and we earned it. My name is Maya Rogers and I learned to recognize the power and ability in my own voice. So now our honor choir is going to perform for you.
These guys are amazing. amazing. I got chills. That's the coolest song they sang. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. awesome. All right, I'm going to pass the mic to Meyer. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank you so much for coming here tonight and bravely sharing your immense talent with all of us. You have a fantastic blend. Like I could tell you were the honor choir because no one was out singing anyone else. It was this perfect blend. It was fantastic. You are the best part of our meeting. Um, so it's downhill from here after you leave. So um, if you can line up over here, I have some merchandise to give each one of you. And then you can go out that door by Mr. DeMonte and meet your parents in the lobby. So thank you so much again. Well done. I'm going to add a special thank you to Mrs. Martin, who gave of her time and talent to lead these outstanding young singers. So thank you so much. Isn't that great? I mean, I know, I know, I know right? Crying over okay. <laughs> So beautiful. All right. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to the lovely artwork behind me. Emily Stevenson's Ramona artists have decorated the boardroom this month with an amazing array of beautiful artwork. First graders created their own versions of Starry Night, inspired by Vincent Van Gogh. Second graders created interpretations of Alma Woodsy Thomas's abstract work by layering a watercolor background with bright mosaic patterns. Third graders created special self-portraits that included unique identifying qualities of themselves that were based on studies of famous, famous artists such as Kehendi Wiley, Frida Kahlo, John Singer Sargent, Vincent Van Gogh, Chuck Close, and more. Fourth graders learned the technique of one-point perspective drawing, relying on a central vanishing point, rulers, and a variety of diagonal, horizontal, and vertical lines to render buildings from a vertical point of view. I seek a motion to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2024 Board of Education regular and executive session meetings. I move to approve the minutes of the March 18th, 2024 regular and executive session meetings. May I have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Board members, are there any comments, errors, or omissions to the minutes? Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Ann Hart? Yes. Bonnie Kim? Yes. Allison Paplis? Yes. Lisa Schneider Phibbs? Yes. John Cesaretti? Yes. Aaron Stone? Yes. The motion carries. This is the first opportunity for the public to address the board. Are there any community members here who wish to speak? Okay. We will then move on to our committee reports. We are beginning with facility development. Mrs. Kim. Thank you. Mike Bickler of Nicholas and Associates reported on the successful completion of the final steps for the summer 2023 construction projects, including starting all five chillers over spring break. Mr. Bickler noted they will continue to run test balance procedures on systems at each school. 
The board and administration also recognized STR partners Colby Lewis's upcoming retirement at the end of the school year. Mr. Lewis has made extensive contributions within District 39 during his 20 plus years supporting construction and renovation work within our schools. Thank you. Uh, strategy, Mrs. Schneider Fabes. So principals Kelly Jackson and Kate Dominique shared a presentation outlining the 5-8 schedule committee's work to evaluate the schedule structure, identify needs and priorities for best practices, and refine schedules to best serve students. The committee partnered with the district management group, DMG, for this work and participated in the Scheduling Institute for Secondary Schools. DMG provided coaching sessions focused on schedule structures, evaluation course offerings, time management, consideration of staffing plans, and effective ways for planning time to meet student needs and provide opportunities for staff collaboration. The changes to the 5-8 schedule are recommended to align best practices, identify priorities and research on middle school learners and their development needs. Over the next year, the committee will work through logistics such as master scheduling, staffing plans, and curricular support prior to full implementation of the new schedules in fall of 2025. And I have to say, during the committee uh, meeting of the whole, we were all very impressed with how thoughtful and thorough this planning was. I don't know. A lot of hard work on that. Thank you. All right, we are moving on to liaison reports. Um, I went to the committee, uh, sorry, I went to the community review or uh, CRC, sorry, community review committee or CRC meeting um, that was on April 9th. The group broke into subgroups and their goal was for each subgroup to have a draft of their portion of the report ready. They are working very hard to have a final report that they are going to present to the board at our May meeting. Um, Ed Foundation, Mr. Cesar Reddy. I went to the Ed Foundation meeting last Wednesday. It was a great meeting. Uh, it's such a great group. Um, they covered a lot, so I'll just say a few things. Um, they, there was a phenomenal presentation on special gifts, a $5,000 gift, and um, our own Tony DeMonte has been doing these amazing videos that I think will be rolled out at some point on um, how to help kids handle difficult information in social media. So I can't wait for you all to see those. Uh, then there were, there's a lot of other activity, and then there were um, presentations on grip grants, which are always fun. Mm -hmm. And Kelly Jackson presented on the living wall, which is extremely cool. And um, there was one on whiteboards for thinking classrooms, uh, Becky Barch, and then podcasting equipment, so we have professional podcasting equipment here uh, at AO. And, and then there was, I think I have one more. Okay, there were other presentations about other gifts that were, were given. And um, then they went through all the events that they've sponsored over the past year. And I wanted to call out, they have a future event, May 17th, movie night, Wilmette Movie Theater. So not to be missed. Thank you. That's very thorough. Very thorough. All right. Um, the the uh, District Strategic Advisory Team, or DSAT, Mrs. Pathless. Thank you. Um, actually, DSAT has not met since our last board meeting, but we'll have our third meeting on May 30th and our final meeting, I believe, on June 20th. Okay. All right. Thank you. The Wilmette Village Intergovernmental Cooperation Working Group, Mrs. Kim and Mrs. Schneider Fabes. No updates. Okay. No, but I will add that I know um, following the, the team's last direction, um, there's some staff meetings that are getting ready to get started. Uh, Mike Brayman from the village is, is helping to coordinate a representative from each organization who will help to inform the mental health campaign and awareness campaign that uh, will be forthcoming. So we're really excited for that. And Anthony Haddock happens to be here tonight. So I'm just going to call him out because he's going to serve as one of our representatives on that team. So we're really glad to have Anthony serving in that capacity with us. Thank you. Um, Illinois Association of School Boards or IASB, Mrs. Pathless. 
That's me again. Um, IASB is now accepting uh, resolutions from member school districts, um, member school boards, pardon me, for consideration by the 2024 delegate assembly. Uh, there's an online submission form and other pertinent information on the website. Uh, they must, the resolutions must uh, submitted for consideration must be approved by the member district's board of education prior to submission and the deadline is June 26. Oh, and the 2024 joint annual conference has been set. It uh, will be taking place November 22nd through the 24th of 2004 in Chicago. Thank you. A legislative update, Mrs. Pathless. Oh, that's me again. Um, the Illinois legislature is in session and they're entering their final four weeks. Um, tentative adjournment is set for May 24th, but that may be expe uh, extended. We expect the activity level to increase because there'll be a lot of focus on the annual state budget for the final days. Um, meanwhile, there's just been a lot of um, committee action going on. And if anything happens, I will update you. Okay, all right, right. thank you. We are moving on to information items. Um, the first item up is written communication. Dr. Kremis Coley. Uh, yes, thank you. The board received written communication from Walter Keats suggesting the consolidation of Avoca District 37. May I proceed with the administrative announcement? You may. Thank you. Uh, first up is staffing for the upcoming school year. Springtime is always an exciting time in school districts as we get, begin to plan and prepare for the upcoming school year. Part of this work always includes the hiring of new teachers and administrators for vacant positions. And this year we have seen a truly outstanding group of individuals, lots of interest in our open positions, and we're very excited about the candidates that are being considered for these positions. This evening on the personnel agenda, excuse me, we have several fantastic teachers, administrators, and staff recommended for hire. I would like to take a moment to introduce the board and our community to one of these individuals who is here with us this evening, Dr. Joshua Swanner. If you would please stand to be recognized, you're welcome to join us at the podium. I'll share just a little bit about Dr. Swanner. Uh, Dr. Swanner is recommended this evening for the position of Assistant Director of Curriculum and Instruction. He joins us uh, with extensive experience as a teacher, teacher leader, and administrator. Some of you may recognize him. Dr. Swanner is currently in his seventh year as principal at Greeley Elementary School in Winnetka. And prior to his principalship at Greeley, uh, Dr. Swanner previously served as assistant principal at the Skokie School, which is a five, six grade building, and as teacher both in Winnetka and in St. Charles. Dr. Swanner brings to this position a commitment to supporting students and staff learning to building strong and successful school communities and advancing effective curriculum and instruction. I am very confident in him joining our team and we're really excited to have him start with us in August. Joshua, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple quick comments. Throughout the interview process, it was made abundantly clear to me that Wilmette is a destination district for educators and I'm beyond excited and humbled to join this administrative team um, and work side by side with staff members. Um, is it August 1st yet? <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very excited. Um, but, but thank you. And I'm looking forward to contributing and learning right out of the gate. say we have had just really outstanding candidates for each of our positions that we have uh, been considering so far and we're excited about what uh, the upcoming interviews have for us as well so welcome Joshua I, I share your excitement <laughs> okay yes, yes. <laughs> uh, all right a couple of other administrative announcements first of all the tentative last day of school we always say tentative until it's actually the last day of school um, it will be June 6th Based on our careful review of the school calendar and emergency days, we are able to establish the final day of school to be Thursday, June 6, provided no additional emergency days are used between now and the 6th of June. Uh, Wilmette Junior High School will host their graduation ceremony this year at Nutra High School on the evening of Wednesday, June 5th. 
And this year it's especially noteworthy because all of our students will graduate together at one ceremony that hasn't happened here in a really long time. And it's been a bit of a Herculean effort uh, on behalf of our administrative team to uh, coordinate all the logistics to make this possible and to be in New Trier High School and their new gym is just really going to be exciting. Parking will be a bear. We all know this. <laughs> so plan in advance for that. Uh, but it will be really neat to see all of our students celebrating together along with their families. Speaking of celebration, our Reflections celebration is coming up on May 22nd. Our annual reflection ceremony um, is held this year again. This is our annual tradition that honors our district retirees and celebrates our employees who have reached their career milestones within our district. So this is always such a wonderful event and we hope many of our teachers, staff, administrators will join us as well as board members if you're able to. So thank you so much for that celebration. Also later on this evening's agenda, um, in terms of planning for next year, we have the 2024-2025 uh, Board of Education meeting calendar. Um, it has been established and is recommended for approval within today's consent agenda. The board is maintaining the regular Monday schedule with a few meetings adjusted for holidays and breaks, which is pretty typical for us at this point. Property tax assessment appeals, District 39 received two PTABs. In the last month, an estimate of the financial impact has been prepared for the board and uh, has been prepared for the board should the appellants uh, be successful in their appeals. And then finally, we have um, processed several Freedom of Information Act requests. The district received FOIA requests from Shrug Oak International School of Mohegan Lake, New York, requesting copies of all records uh, received from Pope Pro requested and uh, received from ProPublica between 9-1-2023 uh, and 2-1-2024 related to their program. From attorney Deborah Weiss of Witted Tackiff LLC requesting employment records for a specific employee and documentation slash materials for structured literacy. And then finally, a commercial FOIA from Smart Procure requesting purchasing records from December 19th, 2024 to the request date of April 12th, 2024. That concludes our administrative reports to the board. I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Board members, any questions, comments? Okay, let's continue with annual business. Dr. Kremaskoli. All right, well, thank you. I will um, introduce, excuse me, Dr. Swanson, who has the December 1 child count, which we're a little past December, but um, every year it keeps uh, getting pushed back a little bit by the state. So Dr. Swanson will give us a, a quick update on this. Yeah, the December 1st child count is a number used by the Illinois State Board of Education to really assess how many students are in special education in the state of Illinois. Um, they begin, they take a snapshot sort of of what we report on December 1st, and then there are correction periods allowed all the way through the end of February and then the Illinois State Board finalizes everything and certifies the data at the end of March, which is why the December 1st child count is not actually finished until the end of March. Um, <laughs> it is not, uh, th there's nothing earth shattering in our December 1st child count. The, our count of children with IEPs is generally reflective of the number of students that we have in our district. It fluctuates slightly up and down over the years. Um, at this point, we're a little bit lower than we have been in the last few years in terms of the percentage of students with IEPs. 15.08% of our students have IEPs. That's consistent with the state of Illinois. Um, in terms of the, the students that count as students with IEPs, it's all of the children who are enrolled in District 39 who have an individualized education program, as well as we count the students who attend private and parochial schools within our boundaries that are eligible under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and are receiving some services from us through what's called proportionate share. Those students may or may not be residents of District 39, but they are attending private or parochial schools within our boundaries. So it, conversely, if we have students that are a resident of District 39, but are attending a private or parochial school in Evanston, the Evanston School District would provide that service. So it's, it's based on where the school is located for those students. Does anybody have any questions? 
Board members, any questions, comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think we're ready for what would be the second opportunity for the audience to address the board. Are there any audience members who wish to speak at this time? Okay. We will continue with our agenda. The next order of business is the consent agenda. Are there any items that the board would like pulled from the consent agenda? All right. Mrs. Hart, please proceed with the motions. I move to approve the personnel report dated April 29th, 2024. I move to approve the 2024-2025 Board of Education meeting calendar. I move to release to the public the executive session minutes of October 2nd, 2023. Move to approve to maintain as confidential the executive session minutes of May 2nd, 2023. August 28th, 2023, September 18th, 2023, October 16th, 2023, October 23rd, 2023, November 6, 2023, November 13th, 2023, and January 2nd, 2024. January 22nd, 2024. I move to approve to dispose of executive session audio recordings pursuant to district policy 2 220 for February 14, 2022, February 28, 2022, March 14, 2022, March 21, 2022, April 11, 2022, and April 25, 2022. I move. I'm sorry. Move to approve the accounts payable for bills listed between March 19th, 2024 through April 29th, 2024 in the following amounts. Educational fund $442,121.95. O&M fund $90,199.48. Transportation $200,026.95. Capital projects, $484,623. Total all funds, $1,216,971.38. Move to approve the manual checks issued between March 19, 2024 and April 29, 2024 in the following amounts. Educational fund, $1,050,228.24. O&M Fund, $125,461.88. Transportation, $64.08. Capital Projects, $50,002.05. Total All Funds, $1,225,756.25. May I have a second? Second. Yeah. The motion has been made and seconded. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ann Hart? Yes. Bonnie Kim? Yes. Allison Pathless? Yes. Lisa schneider faves Yes. John Cesaretti? Yes. Aaron Stone? Yes. The yeas have it. Motion carries. We're moving on to conference items. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? Is there any good in welfare? Okay. I seek a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss specific personnel, special education, individual student matters, and collective negotiations. I move to adjourn to executive session to discuss the appo appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees, or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees, and the placement of individual students in special education programs and other matters relating to individual students. May I have a second? Second. Motion having been made and seconded, will the clerk please call the roll? Allison Pathless? Yes. Lisa schneider Fabes. Yes. John Cesaretti? Yes. Ann Hart? Yes. Bonnie Kim? Yes. Aaron Stone? Yes. Motion carries. We are now adjourned to executive session, and the time is 7.32 p.m. <laughs>